And hello, everybody. It's my pleasure to announce today's panel discussion in the frame of the course Contemporaneity and Art at Stockholm's University of the Arts, Stockholm's Konstantika Högskolan, uh, which is dedicated to the subject of a national theater in relation to contemporary society. And uh, I'm very happy to announce our two guests, both of whom have proved to be not only significant and widely recognized theater makers, but also very unique and in many ways groundbreaking programmers and curators who made a strong impact on various theater institutions they were in charge of during their professional work. So first I would like to welcome Matthias Andersson, a uh, very well known and accomplished Swedish playwright and director, and as of recently, an artistic director of the Royal Dramatic Theater, Dramaten, also known for his very successful and internationally recognized artistic leadership of one of the most notable Swedish theaters. I'm talking, of course, about Bakka Theater in Gothenburg. Welcome, Matthias. Thank you very much. Thank you. And as my second guest, I'm happy to introduce Oliver Frelich, one of the most renowned Croatian, or correct me if I'm wrong, Oliver, uh, maybe it will be more appropriate to say post-Yugoslav uh, theater directors, who has been in the recent years particularly active in the German-speaking theater. And prior to that, Oliver has raised a lot of international attention with the number of his politically engaged productions, but also through his leadership of the Croatian National Theater in Rijeka, Croatia, and more recently also as the curator of the part of the program for Burg Theater in Vienna. Welcome, Oliver. Hello. Okay, uh, first, I would like to start uh, this conversa conversation less formally, given the circumstances. I would like to begin by asking you, how are you doing? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, it's uh, really a pity that, that we couldn't meet uh, live, and I would so much like to meet uh, Oliver, of course, and you, Anya, and all the students. So it's, uh, we try to do the best with this uh, Zoom uh, uh, concept, and hope it will make sense okay. yeah i would like to thank you all uh, for for this opportunity to share some of my experience and hopefully to learn a little bit more about uh, your school your students and i'm glad to meet uh, matthias as well uh, virtually this time but hopefully in not so distant future maybe alive as well yeah okay so let's begin uh, matthias uh, uh, you happen to take over your new position uh, of the artistic director at Dramaten right before the, the Corona outbreak, uh, uh, which, as uh, as we all know, has resulted in a complete lockdown of nearly all theaters in the biggest part of the world. How are you holding up in this situation, given the fact that this turn of events significantly uh, changed the course of your planning? Well, I mean, as you said, I worked for one week and then this started with the Corona thing. And of course, all the things that I wanted to start, um, uh, discussions with the ensemble and making really what is the big narrative, what I want to do with the Dramat and the National Theatre, uh, with all the people working there together with them and what we're going to investigate uh, for the four years I now uh, will work there. Uh, of course, um, it's much more tricky to have it uh, online and really getting the right, because I also want to have start dialogues and discussions, of course. So it's, uh, that part has been really, really uh, tricky, really to manage now for these two months that I've been running. On the other hand, it also opened some creative things that people, uh, we have started up some things that trying to make other kinds of uh, uh, projects that also been, we have been out somewhere in the streets and out in the city to, uh, to meet the audience there, and this is connected to some work I've done at Bakke Theatre as well. And also, yeah, trying to see what, uh, investigate what's in the ensemble and that their ideas for what we can do uh, from this new position. And all, all the time try to reinvent uh, how can we uh, in some way reach out and, uh, to our audience in uh, different platforms and uh, also, of course, in this digital form. So it uh, has op also opened up some kind of creativity, I think, that could be a good starting point for the work I want to do uh, further on with, with, the, with the ensemble and the theatre house. 
and it would be really wonderful to uh, get deeper into the subject uh, subject of what uh, you're planning on doing yes. further on because the audience uh, uh, should be uh, one of the central points of this uh, uh, conversation. But before we move to that, I would like to ask Oliver, um, when the pandem pandemic started, you were, as far as I know, in Stuttgart, uh, working on a new production. But prior to that, you had just completed an interesting project uh, uh, together with the famous uh, creation philosopher, Srećko Horvat, for Burgtheater in Vienna. And can you tell us a little bit more about that project? Uh, the, prior to that project, I uh, first uh, staged uh, Heiner Miller's uh, Hamlet Machine Burgtheater, and this was like a, a kind of intro to our curatorial program. We wanted to deal with the question of uh, Europe, uh, like uh, what, what this name stands for at those times uh, of uh, revival of ethnocentric politics and uh, uh, this deep crisis of democracy and, and uh, like uh, the coronavirus actually was a, a, a kind of closure of whole, uh, uh, a whole series of our programs. Uh, uh, we, we collaborated with different uh, uh, institutions and uh, uh, people from different uh, areas uh, to open as much as, po as possible perspectives on contemporary Europe. And uh, uh, what I really like was a, a co-production with uh, Kunsthalle uh, Vienna. We did, uh, uh, we hosted uh, their uh, seminar called uh, White West uh, Automatization of Apartheid. So uh, the, 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 one of the dominant topic was like uh, 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 new forms of Eurocentrism that we have uh, and now and how we can uh, articulate this or and try to to deconstruct it and uh, we just finished on the 2nd of uh, of march so basically i, I left uh, we had another event that was boris budin's guided tour through uh, vienna he's another uh, very famous uh, post yugoslav uh, uh, philosopher and uh, then uh, suddenly we were faced with this uh, uh, new reality and i took this time really to reflect on on the theater what theater is or could be in those times where when we are not allowed to uh, gather and where uh, all our activities moved to uh, virtual most of the time like what 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 is the theater today because the theater was challenging uh, 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 itself and its uh, essentialism through new medias from let's say uh, advance of film on but what 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 would be the theater today and of course uh, different political impacts on the theater that we faced through uh, uh, through this ongoing crisis okay um as we can see, and this is the question for both of you, uh, the theaters, uh, and then you gave me a good, uh, good uh, actually introduction to, to what I was about to ask you next. Uh, as we can see, the theaters were the first ones to close down, as it seems now, they will be the last ones uh, to open or to reopen. Um, how do you comment on this very quick decision to keep theaters closed, even in societies that have successfully stopped the first wave of the pandemic and started slowly reopening. That's apparently not the case with you, Oliver, because you just told me that uh, you are planning on going back to Germany, this time to Köln, to Cologne, uh, to uh, start working on a new production there. But uh, in most of Europe, as we can see, the theaters are still being uh, closed. And um, uh, for instance, uh, in Sweden, uh, and this is the comparison that I very often use, uh, uh, it was very easy to put uh, all the theaters or most of the theaters under complete lockdown in a matter of not days, but literally hours. Whereas uh, uh, some other places of mass gatherings that in, a, in another way ritualized community, such as gyms, remained opened. And um, uh, that still remains a mystery to me, or why somebody made such an estimation that it's so dangerous uh, to sit in a theater, um, maybe, uh, uh, maybe trying to respect uh, 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 or implement the measures of, of the so-called social distancing. And it's not dangerous to go uh, in one of the big gyms where 
we all know uh, that some of them are quite big and have quite high frequency of people that are uh, actually uh, that that are very often uh, in a situation to be very close to one another and uh, they're sharing all the all the gym equipment and so on so how do you comment on that uh, yes, as you say, I mean, the Swedish uh, way of dealing with this has been very much, they have the, the made recommendations and we have to interpret them all the time. And one way you could say it would have been easier if we had just had a restriction to say close down the theater until this date. Since I started, uh, I have been, we have been every day trying to uh, uh, interpret it for each day and making new decisions, new decisions, new decisions all the time. But now we're planning for opening this uh, autumn, the theater, and planning for a repertoire to having audience back. Probably we will not, we will not be able to have full audiences. And I'm very much also interested in to, can we have to make like our original concepts that could really make sense uh, during the, the way we place the audience and the concept of the theater we're making. And I hope there will be a lot of space and room for that uh, this autumn so we can also make concept that really can work with, uh, with, uh, with the physical restrictions of what we, whatever we are and the combination of the uh, filming and, and uh, uh, putting uh, the audience and uh, the way the, uh, the actors can, can interact on stage, etc. So I hope it can also be some creative uh, original concept that we can make inside the house uh, this autumn that could make sense also with the restrictions. Yeah. That's interesting. And what about uh, you, Oliver? <laughs> what about, uh, Croatia? Uh, I, I have I've read recently that Croatia is planning reopening theaters in a rather strange manner. Can you yes. tell us something about that? Uh, I just uh, f uh, first have to explain the situation here in Croatia. First, we uh, had uh, uh, complete lockdown and uh, one week after we had two very strong earthquakes here in Zagreb so basically we were not allowed to go uh, on the streets during those uh, aftershocks so called aftershocks uh, uh, staying uh, to to uh, respect like a social distance so it was really uh, a crazy situation but I remember on the day when we had the first uh, uh, and the strongest earthquake people were on the street and it was a, a strange kind of gathering because people were in the panic and there was a lot of fear uh, uh, but at the same time a, a strange need for for closeness uh, even uh, between people who didn't know each other at that point now they uh, uh, allowed the theater to start with the rehearsals and also uh, to have performances with limited number of people. You have uh, um, some rules about uh, how many square meters per one uh, visitor. Uh, and uh, I know that Christian National Theater from Split already uh, had a, a, a uh, and performance, uh, and they changed completely mise uh, en So uh, th this uh, this is for me very strange not because i think what we had in the theater was a perfect i mean most of the time we operate in this uh, very petit bourgeois uh, uh, context uh, with the audience sitting and watching uh, uh, in front of them uh, not being able to move or interact or or whatever uh, but uh, it is like for me the most uh, strange thing is how easily we accepted those new norms not not to question them, especially in the theater. One of my new productions will be uh, in uh, in uh, Maxim Gorky Theater in uh, in Berlin, and instead of just like following those. Uh, uh, rules that we have right now we want to question like what what how it affects the theater and uh, like uh, 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 what what kind of social control new so forms of social control is introduced and how the theater can respond to uh, uh, this so basically instead of just putting uh, whatever play and uh, pretend like everything is normal we want to uh, analyze this new abnormality I, I i see new abnormality because we we spoke a little bit about this before starting this conversation what we had before was not normal definitely you know uh, uh, we we just got an acceleration all the technical instruments for those new forms of social control were already there and now they are just in their full power and uh, everything is in the fifth gear. Uh, on the other hand, with this new performance I'm doing in uh, Max and Gorky Theatre, I don't want also 
to step into the realm of uh, right-wing argumentation, you know, uh, uh, like insisting on certain constitutional rights as, a, as an instrument for uh, uh, all those problematic politics of exclusion based on different backgrounds. So uh, uh, somehow I would like to, to, to find a way to articulate this new situation, not just to pretend like, okay, wow, it's great. Now we can work again and let's just work again. No, something essentially has changed and uh, to reflect on, on this change, I think that would be, uh, should be the task of the theater in upcoming uh, uh, times. And I think that uh, we are not completely aware of all those changes that that uh, are already uh, here. Uh, uh, we, we will become to be aware uh, step by step because the process of normalization of certain uh, uh, behavioral patterns has been so quick at those times uh, that uh, we, we didn't actually have a lot of chance to, to reflect on it. Okay, and when you're saying that what we had before Corona was not normal, how would you, how would you describe that abnormality in regards to the one that we are experiencing right now. But it, it's very interesting when we talk about uh, uh, this new crisis, like uh, we had this uh, older population, I don't want to generalize, but in certain countries also in the country where I'm uh, uh, living right now or the country where my parents live, United States of America, the older population was really ignoring, let's say, uh, climate changes. And uh, with, with this corona crisis, with, where they became a uh, uh, first target uh, uh, and, and most uh, risky group, uh, uh, there was like a slight hope at the very beginning for some uh, uh, generational intersolidarity and, and maybe the space for some new uh, uh, politics or way of political thinking. But now I see that right wing co-opted this whole situation much quicker and and they are making it already uh, politically very profitable but what what we had before was also you know a uh, 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 very problematic uh, uh, the, the way how uh, West, what the Western societies were turning into uh, uh, how we were treating different problems uh, 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 problem of uh, uh, refugee crisis or problem of climate changes or uh, uh, what was going on with all those liberal democracies in Europe uh, uh, I, I, I don't know if your students are uh, familiar with the fact but I am going to be put on trial in Poland because of my uh, they, they've heard of yes work work in the theater. So some uh, basic freedoms that we uh, were taking for so many times for granted uh, are not granted at all. And and uh, uh, also in Croatia, I had to leave at certain point because it became impossible for me to to work. Uh, uh, I was really challenging. Uh, uh, and try. Uh, I was challenging the uh, politics that we had for last 25 years, which uh, are very uh, uh, ethnocentric. Uh, and, and when I say ethnocentric, I'm, I'm really, it's really euphemism. Uh, uh, and also I was trying to uh, use, and maybe that's the point where we have to come, uh, uh, Croatian National Theatre, where I was intendant for two years, not just uh, uh, as a regular repertory theatre, but as a uh, uh, performative instrument for broader social performance. I didn't want really to create any kind of social consensus or promote any kind of social consensus, but really to antagonize the society, to create a kind of broader performance. And at the end, we really had uh, uh, exactly this, 95% of society against us, and let's say 5% of society uh, 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 being with us. But to, to make the long story uh, a short, I, I never believed like, in a, in a in a theater audience as a kind of uh, community which uh, that uh, peacefully coexists. I think there are so many differences between us. Uh, 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 we are coming from different social classes. Uh, uh, we uh, have a different symbolic or financial or whatever capital. And like uh, uh, this whole idea of national theater that promotes. 
uh, uh, culture. What what is the culture? I mean, what what is the Western canon? How uh, how we got to this point? Th th those are the things that uh, should be constantly questioned. And I was trying to to uh, work uh, uh, with with those questions. Yes, it's uh, well, you actually uh, um, already answered to what. Uh, I, I, I've been planning uh, to come um, uh, later in our discussion, uh, or you may be open another another direction for this uh, discussion, which is the audience. And uh, to paraphrase to paraphrase uh, Jacques Rancière, he also talks about uh, the audience not as a monolith, uh, but uh, as a group of individuals who uh, who gather um, around a certain theater event, uh, uh, coming from different backgrounds. Uh, not only socially and politically speaking, but also from different experiences on that particular day or evening when they come to see the performance. And uh, that's very interesting because the notion of audience has been uh, very much linked uh, to the concept of national theatres. And this is something that I really wanted to talk to you both, given the fact that you have both uh, had the experience of uh, running uh, uh, public and national theatres. And it would be really nice to um, hear something about, uh, you already gave us uh, uh, some inputs, but it would be already, it would be also nice to hear uh, what Matthias has to say about uh, how he see, how you see uh, the audience uh, that um, goes to national theater in Sweden. Uh, no, I'm, 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 regarding this to say, I totally agree, uh, let's go, go back to the last thing there, that uh, I strongly hope that this uh, will have a, some great impact also the corona situation, how the way we're making theater and discussion as Oliver said also when we come out on the other side and questioning a lot, lot of things that uh, in the way we make theater and also uh, I hope well, it could be something that we could build further on and just not go back to normal after the uh, what was before there. But uh, no, when I worked at Bakke, we worked very much like with, uh, it was really a representation, I think, that we worked very much with different, with the community. And since it was also basically youth theater, and we had those contacts via the schools, we really had like, uh, uh, I would say that we had like so, a sort of representation of uh, uh, young people uh, representing all the social uh, economical backgrounds all over the city of Gothenburg represented in our audience and of course all the time we were very, very like dealing with this and saying that it's a the audience really with individuals but from different positions different religions different ethnic background different class background etc so so it was really a something that we, we all the time we made theater really trying what what could be relevant what is like the 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 the, the way of uh, and not taking like canon and uh, certain positions and certain uh, concept like what is a family, what God are we talking about, what uh, what do we mean with this and that, and not saying that we have something that are all common sense for all the one consensus for the audience. And it was obvious with the work I did at the Bakke all the time, and it was so represented all the time when we made the theater and the way we also work with the room and the way we interacted with the audience. And it was really the, the, I mean, the, the contemporary uh, pluralistic, polyphonic, uh, and also segregated society without, uh, uh, in a globalized world. I mean, this was really the fundamental, what the audience was a representation of, and therefore we all the time needed to like make theater that could make sense in that context. Now, when I come to the natural theater, Dramata is said to be like, I mean, it should be the national theater of Sweden. It should be something that should be relevant for all people inside the borders of uh, Sweden right now. But of course, all, all, all uh, like uh, um, audience the, um, investigations and all the, the you, you cannot pretend that right now, I mean, uh, of course, in a socioeconomic uh, uh, if you look at it, analyze, the audience are like uh, <laughs> much more homogenic and uh, not representing the, the whole population of Sweden, uh, not at all, I would say. So um, it will be a, a big uh, work there. And I mean, to, to say that it should be a position that, uh, I see it from different angles, of course, 
it's the art form of theater. What is theater uh, in the 2020s? Uh, I mean, uh, uh, this, this age, what is really the, the, the relevant thing with theater? What, what can you say? What is the concept of theater at all? How will, can we make the, like, the art form relevant for coming generations and see what is really the, the in aesthetics, but also uh, what, what stories are we putting on stage? What voices are we putting on stage? What, what, what uh, how can we make like, <laughs> theater of, of relevant uh, um, topics, not to say topics, but uh, so, so it's to start there. But also the house, the building is set, I mean, situated in the, the richest part of Stockholm in the middle with all this gold, et cetera. And uh, it's also about the, the position <laughs> of- This is something that I wanted to ask you. How does it feel to come back from a, a, from a Gothenburg suburbia to, uh, exactly what you're describing as a as a central area of Stockholm to a house uh, which is gilded, you know, and uh, with all the ornaments. And uh, uh, this is not just uh, an aesthetical moment, but it comes with a certain legacy, don't you think so? Yeah, for sure. So it's um, it's a great, great tradition. I mean, Ingmar Bergman worked here, so it's, it's a lot. It's been the national theater for so many years, and. Uh, so it's, uh, as you say, it's very traditional and very, uh, 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 it feels, I, I have a great work to do, I would say so. Yeah, we are, we are all very curious and looking forward. And uh, um, that was my main question for you, given your vast experience in uh, working closely with community, as you did uh, throughout your work in Gothenburg, uh, very closely, and uh, uh, daring to go beyond the borders of uh, what is expected from, uh, from theaters, uh, in terms of uh, pleasing the audience. You were, I, because I worked at Bacca several times and I've seen a lot of your productions, uh, the main concept of Bacca was uh, uh, not to please the audience, I would say, but rather to meet the audience and to get to know the audience. And um, uh, how do you think this concept can be applied uh, on your future work uh, at Dramaten? I know you still haven't had the proper chance <laughs> to, really, to really materialize it, but uh, it would be interesting to find uh, more about it, even, as you said, a lot of surveys that have been made, and this is also a question for you, Oliver, uh, because we all know that there have been a lot of surveys uh, studying uh, the structure of audience of public theaters, mostly in Europe and more notably in the Western Europe. And uh, uh, more, more or less all of them have landed in the same uh, conclusion. And that conclusion is that uh, the traditional bourgeois theater audience, which makes uh, the majority of theater audience of public theaters, uh, um, and uh, national theaters respectively is slowly fading away because people are just getting older and older and most uh, of the European European theaters are currently struggling with how to get the new audience because and what happened to uh, to appear as the biggest problem in those surveys is the fact that most of the um, uh, citizens uh, or uh, other members of community that don't fall into that category of the regular theater goers simply don't feel represented in public theaters and uh, in national theaters in particular. So uh, it, would be, uh, it, it would be really nice to hear some of your reflections uh, and um, I'm asking both of you, like I said, uh, about how you see that people, that national theater can really work in a very close encounter with society, trying to represent uh, uh, the society as a whole and not just certain parts of that society. Uh, Matthias, you wanna go first? Yeah, okay. No, but I mean, it's, uh, I mean, the, it's a long, long work and I work with the Bacca, it takes, it's a long time, so you really need to dig uh, deep and you need to be, be out and really, for me, it's not, not it's really going in dialogue with, with uh, the population and the, the dialogue with human beings and make relationships for longer times, uh, longer terms. And also that uh, uh, to, re to really start to, to question who is really has the, 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 the right to, to stand on the, in this house and stand to, to on these stages and uh, this is not something that you can it's not a quick fix it's really 
about, uh, as you said, learning your audience and getting to, to get in, in dialogues with the audience and really uh, also to, to find uh, people, the right persons, in the, if there are like a group or like an area that people don't go to the theater, you know, find the right persons there and you can maybe build bridges. And it takes uh, years to, to make this work uh, function. So it is really, really, and it's both the position of uh, uh, our questioning and our, our own position uh, and not just saying that we have something fantastical theater and we are so relevant and just to, to <laughs> trick and fool people to come to see what we have. And uh, so it's, it's, it's very connected to, I think, uh, a long work with also, I uh, made a lot of research projects also where the ensemble were out like in different areas and collecting material and all these things together can make uh, I think uh, an impact but it's for my position now at the National Theatre I think it will take time really and uh, it's a it's a hard work and uh, well before I give floor to Oliver uh, and ask him to comment on this uh, I would just like to say that it's very interesting that uh, the two of you have a lot in common actually because you have both uh, uh, from your in your own right uh, uh, um, dealing with the notion of uh, documentary theater in its early beginnings uh, both of you have been very deeply involved with uh, uh, what we define as a documentary theater of course this notion is highly disputable whether something like a documentary theater can really exist or not or pseudo documentary theater or whatever so this is uh, something that you both have in common and uh, I I'm interested um, how you invested this uh, uh, experience of uh, working uh, practically as artists uh, in the field of documentary theater or in the mm -hmm. field of, uh, let's say, objective reality uh, um, in, uh, in relation to theater. How do you uh, rely on that experience when you, um, when you get into position of uh, being able to do some programmation or to decide about uh, the general course of some institution. I, I would just like to go one step uh, back uh, uh, this question of national theater and who is represented through this uh, type of institution was crucial for me to uh, go to Rijeka and accept this uh, position of general manager and run this theater for two years because I got it. Sorry to interrupt, but perhaps we should explain people uh, the position of, the, of Rijeka and also for those who don't know, Rijeka is the actual uh, cultural capital this year, right? Yes. And also it's a small, relatively small uh, industrial town uh, on the uh, Croatian coast, uh, 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 not far from Italy as well, uh, but you can say a little bit more about the town so that people can yeah. understand the, the, the theater. This town was the uh, uh, biggest port uh, for Hungarian part of the Hungarian Empire, and uh, this city was uh, multicultural and uh, multi-ethnic uh, uh, for a long period of time. Recently, unfortunately, things uh, has changed a little bit, uh, but uh, uh, and and it has also uh, uh, a mixture of uh, uh, people uh, from all all those neighboring countries. So. Uh, Slovenia is also very close, uh, as you said, Italy, and the, the city was also divided. The part of the city was uh, in the kingdom of Italy, and part of the city was, uh, second half, was in kingdom of Yugoslavia. And uh, so, and also th there is this very strange uh, story like uh, Free State Fiume. So the nuncio, the fascist, uh, 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 he declared Free State Fiume for two years. Uh, uh, so. Uh, the, there are like interesting parts and very traumatic parts of the history of city of Rijeka and uh, all those uh, uh, traditions are still present in, in, in this city and this was very challenging for me to go there. Also this was the only city that uh, did not accept completely this national homogenization which was the main political program in Croatia since 1991 till now. Uh, uh, they, they had a, a kind of uh, a different uh, local policy politics, uh, the, the city by itself was more tolerant uh, uh, at, uh, and promoted
something like uh, tolerance as a such. I have to say that also very important thing was for the city was a migration of people from Bosnia and Herzegovina, where I was originally, where I was born to this city uh, after the World War II. So they, they were coming, uh, uh, th th those unqualified workers also came and they uh, stayed there. And th th this also like added to uh, uh, diversity of the city. And uh, uh, the title of European uh, Capital of Culture that Rijeka won uh, and, and now actually is a capital of culture, uh, the title of the program was a port of diversity. So uh, when I was invited to uh, uh, take this position of uh, intendant of Christian National Theatre in Rijeka, I was really interested in the question of representation through this kind of institutions. We have in Croatia, although we are a relatively small country with a population of 4.5 million of people, uh, we have five national theatres. So this is also a very interesting fact. And uh, uh, for the most of the time, those institutions were treated as a kind of refrigerators for the national culture. So basically, you put your national culture to not get rotten into this kind of institution. And, uh, and of course, there are different mechanisms for exclusion of those not belonging to certain uh, stratas of society. So first on the basis of uh, national identity, and then secondly, on the basis of the lack of uh, uh, cultural and symbolic capital for understanding of very complex codes uh, and uh, representations that we have in this kind of institutions. So coming to uh, Christian National Theatre, I really wanted to change this. Uh, uh, I, I was pretty uh, sure from the very beginning that this is the lost battle, but the biggest joy is in losing, uh, uh, not, not actually in winning. Uh, and I knew it's not gonna last forever. So I, I stayed there for two years, uh, but I, I really tried to change different things. So uh, we, we used uh, uh, the, the, the whole institution, as I said before, as a perform performative instruments. Of course, we were doing uh, our regular shows and trying to make them as good as possible. Uh, another thing in Croatia, I, we have uh, four branches under the same roof. So it's ballet, opera, Croatian drama, and Italian drama. And uh, this already creates very complex dynamics and some of those branches are more conservative and uh, actually it was difficult to implement uh, uh, another type of representation that I was interested in. But we opened the theater for different minorities. This was basically uh, my program to uh, give the space to those who are who have never been represented through this space. And we were changing the name of the theater on the regular basis. So uh, it was uh, 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 Roma's National Theater, it was Italian National Theater, et cetera, et cetera. And all this was a kind of challenge to uh, uh, let's say ethnocentric normatives uh, 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 pervading in, in creation uh, society. And pretty soon we got very strong reactions from uh, different gruppations, starting from Catholic Church, then ultra right wing organizations, then uh, uh, the biggest uh, uh, party, uh, right wing party in Croatia, uh, uh, then football fans, etc., etc. And at one point we had the theater almost constantly under some kind of the siege. Uh, I would go uh, for work and there were people protesting or praying for us. Uh, uh, the culmination of this happened uh, in 2015 on uh, the biggest uh, national holiday in Croatia, uh, so-called Operation Storm. This was a military action at the end of the war in Croatia, where uh, 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 during which more than 100,000 of Croatian citizens of Serb Serbian nationality were uh, forced to leave their homes and a majority of them never got back. So on this very day when the country was full of tri triumphalism, etc., uh, uh, and nobody was thinking about the people who had to leave their homes, uh, 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 everything was like just in this triumphalistic tone, I uh, uh, performed the performance uh, uh, Second Sex, where I invited, invited five women of different nationality uh, to have a kind of uh, a confession performance on the stage and talk about the word that we had in the 90s from the female perspective. So it was just five women on the stage 
not just, uh, uh, not to be misunderstood, but uh, in the form it was very simple. We were under, uh, like, uh, 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 literally under the siege for a few hours in the theater and we could not leave. The police could not guarantee our safety. So uh, th th those, this was one of the consequences of trying to make this uh, space, the space of representation for the others with the capital O. And uh, your question about the documentary theater, I, I like this question very much, although uh, I, I share your doubts if documentary theater is possible or uh, what it is. For me, documentary theater was always a chance uh, for uh, to, to play with the fiction. And uh, uh, I, I, I always saw that introduction of any kind of document uh, opens a huge space for, for, for the fiction and, and this, question uh, uh, where, where uh, uh, faction starts and where the fiction stops is, is most interesting for me. And of course, when you have a, a huge institution uh, like this theater, which always stands for some kind of truth, uh, whatever this word means, it, it was was really interesting to play with with this uh, with this dramaturgy. Like I, I saw every announcement that we public announcement that we sent as as a performative act because we could write whatever we wanted. We 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 did not have to follow those rules. You know, like uh, uh, really playing playing with the perception and and expectations of our audience and who is represented. And who is misrepresented in, in this institution. Maybe you can also say a few words about, I don't know which occasion was that when you uh, were also, I think, uh, uh, sort of not celebrating, but uh, giving your resp response um, uh, to some other Croatian uh, national holiday when you uh, hanged the LGBTQ uh, flag on yes. the... Uh, yeah, Croatia. Which occasion was that? But uh, maybe you can tell us a bit more details about what kind of um, public actions uh, you. <laughs> Uh, that, that was, a, I would say, a kind of installation on one of, let's say, the second biggest national holiday, because we're a country with a lot of national holidays, as you can see from this very uh, uh, short elaboration. Uh, uh, we wanted, like, uh, uh, to uh, represent LGBTQ uh, community. We are coming from country which is uh, extremely homophobic, transphobic, just like put any kind of prefix plus phobic, uh, you, you will have 80% uh, of society under this umbrella. And uh, uh, the, the concept was relatively simple. Uh, we are obliged by the law to put, to have a national flag all the time on the theater for, I don't know, probably that wind can uh, blow into something. Uh, and I decided to put like, I don't know, 10 times bigger uh, uh, rainbow flag next to this one. Uh, uh, for the majority of the society, so this act as an offense. And I, I gave a lot of interviews and I was doing a lot of, uh, 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 I, I was in, involved in a lot of discussions to say, wh what is the problematic if we want to give the visibility on this very day to this population which uh, is discriminated on so many levels including the fact that we have uh, 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 even in our constitution an act saying that marriage is exclusively community between the man and the woman so uh, uh, and and this was at the beginning at, of my term and after that like uh, it was just worse and worse in terms of attacks and uh, uh, all all that was done uh, uh, by different interest groups to stop us uh, from running the theater uh, 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 in this way. Yeah, but uh, truth be told, uh, at the same time, uh, you uh, gained a lot of uh, popularity in, uh, let's say, progressive artistic circles. Uh, your performances were uh, traveling abroad and uh, it was a 
kind of kind of an honor to to come and work in that theater so that should be said as well uh, in spite of all the uh, in spite of all the uh, misunderstanding uh, that my uh, that, that that was coming uh, in your direction from the official political circles on the other hand you yes. had, uh, you had uh, the artistic uh, success. Yes, of course, in, in terms of artistic success, we had a lot of uh, uh, artistic success and we were touring uh, almost uh, constantly and uh, we didn't have a lot of money, but uh, people were honored to come to work in Rijeka uh, at, during that time. Uh, uh, and uh, I, I think we found a good formula like how to uh, use our ideas as a main capital uh, uh, and and how to like make ourselves visible in another way of course uh, a lot of our uh, colleagues from those progressive uh, liberal uh, circles were not completely happy with uh, uh, our work because we uh, took uh, um, whole media attention at that at those times and uh, this was not easy for everybody to accept that suddenly the city, which is small and seen as a provincial one uh, uh, in this very small country, suddenly uh, gets so much uh, 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 attention, also international attention uh, uh, as well. And European capital of culture is partly a result of this work. Uh, I, I would say that what we already did for uh, making Rijeka a port of diversity influenced the decision uh, uh, of EU to uh, give us the title of uh, European capital of culture. Okay, so from this perspective, you would say it was worth it. Yes, of course, always. Okay, good. Um, and uh, you are coming from two different ends of the world, uh, or, or, or of, of Europe, not the world. Um, Oliver is coming from uh, my part of the world, which is Balkans, uh, which is heavily loaded with political influences in all spheres of human existence, including culture. On the other hand, there is a certain level of independence of cultural institutions from from direct political influences here in Sweden. And uh, can you compare notes, uh, perhaps? It would be interesting uh, to find out more how do you, uh, and not only between the two of you, but uh, between uh, different types of your experiences, like uh, uh, between working at, uh, let's say, National Theater in Rijeka or other public theaters in uh, the post yugoslav area, uh, with uh, your experiences in uh, public theaters in, let's say, Germany, where you worked a lot, and uh, um, the most recent experience in uh, uh, Theater, which is like the mother of all the national theaters, yeah, uh, and uh, um, or Maxim Gorky Theater in Berlin, where you, if I understood you correctly, are currently sitting in the board of the theater. Um, uh, but it, uh, b before you move on, it would be interesting to hear uh, Matthias, uh, uh, because my, uh, this question was actually aiming uh, um, more uh, towards the notion of what is allowed and what is not allowed. Uh, and uh, uh, it was aiming more at the notion of, uh, of, of certain more subtle and discrete forms of censorship uh, that might also exist uh, in the Western theaters uh, that are maybe not as blatant as in our part of the world, like I said, but uh, I, I think they do exist. But maybe it would be interesting to hear Matthias about it first and then. Uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, we don't, obviously we don't have this, uh the strict restrictions again putting our pride flags etc on our buildings and we don't have this kind of uh, uh, government that is the situation in like in the Balkans or in Poland etc and I have some Polish colleagues as well and I know well the situation there but uh, I mean I would say that Swedish uh, culture is very much connected to like the, the social democratic thoughts that everyone it's culture and theater should be for especially the theater and it's a long time since the 60s and 70s that it's not, that it should be for everyone. We should make theater, it should be something that could be including everyone inside the country of Sweden. This is like the, 
the, the thought from the culture politics and uh, they all the time speak, oh, how can you make the houses more open? It should be something that, is, that uh, everyone should take part of. Most of the time there is a, of course, a big lie in this because you can say that we as theater makers should make fiat for everyone, but we cannot like solve all the other problems with the uh, brutal capitalistic uh, concurrence and segregated society. And uh, uh, I think that there is something in the Swedish uh, culture politics that I sympathize very much with the thoughts of it, but on the other hand, uh, it's very vaguely connected to the materialistic uh, <laughs> positions and the power positions of the society overall. And, and uh, therefore, it sometimes became, became a little bit strange also in the Swedish con context that saying that uh, we as culture workers should make like Oh, there is like some pieces that would be could make sense for everyone, but uh, it's just not uh, about the content. It's also about uh, all the other kind of structures and the way the city is built, and the city of Stockholm and the city of Gothenburg is made, and uh, how it's like the, the, uh, regarding to economics. Uh, I mean, most of the Swedish theatre has, on one hand, they're saying that oh, you should uh, be uh, playing in more money. Uh, from the ticket sales. On the other hand, the same politics say, oh, it should be like, you should reach out new groups and uh, other parts of the, uh, in the suburbs, et cetera, et cetera. And these people are the people who have uh, uh, not so much money. So it's like, I think there is some hypocrisy uh, included here. And it's also something that it's very like, um, uh, yeah, I have to deal in the right sense there, but, but it's, uh, in a, it's, it's like everything. On the symbolic level, uh, there are a very good thoughts, I think, about the, the cultural politics of Sweden to say that it should be for everyone. The taxpayer pay money and it should be for everyone. On the other hand, the, 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 and maybe it's also what Oliver sp spoke about in the beginning about, about the corona and the, <laughs> it's like you pretend that everything is like a normal society, that it's, a, for everyone, and then we just put in some culture for everyone. But it's, um, yeah, the connection there is very, very problematic, uh, I think. And also interesting to dig deeper into, but you have to be, uh, it's without, uh, if you maybe come from a context where everything is ideological, uh, it's like we pretend that we have, there is no ideological position of the culture politics here. It's just like, should be for everyone. Uh, and it's, it's a very problematic, I think. Yeah. Which is also an ideological position. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yes. Mm. Also, uh, um, uh, like I said, uh, I, I would like to spend um, like a couple of minutes uh, um, possibly discussing the issue of, uh, of a censorship in uh, contemporary uh, theater, uh, because Oliver and I come from the part of the world where the censorship works in a more direct and uh, obvious way, and it's usually linked to political um, interest groups or uh, those at power, and that's quite obvious and in a way easier to fight, uh, even though sometimes it, it gets very exhausting, uh, and which is, I suppose, the reason that both Oliver and I have decided to uh, to move away after a certain period of time. Uh, but um, uh, there is something interesting that is happening mostly in Western countries. And um, uh, here I'm using the reference offered recently in cultural the uh, theory uh, by a performing art uh, theoretician Anna Vujanovic, who was talking about, she introduced the notion of the economization of politics as opposed to the politicization of production. Uh, and uh, when she did that, she, she was actually referring uh, to um, replacing ideological tools of censorship with the economic tools of, of censorship. Uh, and then she was using uh, lots of examples of different, uh, different types of censorship that uh, took place in the middle of uh, EU, uh, which is pro proclaiming different uh, set of values, uh, at, least, um, at least theoretically. And, uh, uh, but she, she was actually referring to uh, different types of censorship that never really take place in a traditional political arena and are therefore not interpreted as censorship. Because 
uh, I believe that when people say that some performance needs to earn a lot of money, it is an ideological question. Uh, and if it doesn't, it's automatically considered non-successful. And the one who put it on a repertory is also in a way judged as uh, uh, not successful enough. Uh, so uh, we are uh, actually in Western countries, uh, theater artists are, um, in a different kind of political arena, which is operated uh, through different tools. And I would like to hear a bit about that from you. The question goes to both of you. Yeah, I, I was uh, like uh, very often confronted with this uh, very uh, forms of censorship, like the show has been canceled starting with uh, uh, my production in uh, City of Split, uh, where Intendant uh, cancelled it. And then what was even more strange, uh, Prime Minister said, no, 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 it should go. I mean, uh, both of those things were uh, uh, so strange. I mean, the show has been, was cancelled because it was critical towards uh, uh, Prime Minister and his politics from like uh, 10 years before that moment. And uh, also in the uh, uh, city of Krakow, uh, Jan Klata uh, just decided to cancel our show saying that he cannot guarantee for the safety of actors. So this was, uh, we were dealing with the history of Polish anti-Semitism from Romanticism till uh, contemporary times. And he canceled the show under th this pretext. Uh, uh, and the other thing is, and I think this is much more uh, difficult to deal with with uh, uh, this uh, economical uh, censorship, you know, uh, when you were talking about this, uh, how the market uh, uh, can uh, uh, perform this kind of censorship. I remember the interview uh, where uh, uh, Jan Lauer's uh, from Neat Company and, and Elizabeth Lecomte were talking to each other. And then she asked him like, what is your income uh, from the box office? And he said, what uh, box office? Like we get money and we do whatever we want. And, and, and you, you see like, uh, especially in those countries that don't have the system of public theaters, uh, how it is uh, difficult to be critical because you can't survive on, on the market. You have to turn into certain forms of entertainment to, to survive. And I remember uh, Heiner Miller was saying like, uh, we as artists uh, should not fulfill uh, uh, wishes of our audience, but their needs. And those are two different concepts. And that can mean also that you have an empty auditorium with two or three persons and struggling with, struggling with this audience who should not see your show is for me equally important. Theater is not just about those who come to see it, but also about those who stay outside and decide never to come see something because of this or that uh, uh, reason. Um, in my experience in Germany is very interesting because uh, uh, coming uh, with my uh, guest performances, I was really uh, loved by audience and the uh, critique. And the moment when I moved there and started to be uh, a regular uh, guest arbeiter, the thing uh, uh, changed completely. Uh, uh, I uh, I was so severely attacked and some sometimes uh, uh, with really refined racistic uh, argumentation. I remember a few years ago, we had the opening night at Wiener Fest Wochen in Vienna and one of those reviews was was really racistic uh, uh, and and not not even trying to wrap it. Uh, uh, it was openly racistic towards this show, like uh, uh, who are you to tell us? So this you us division, you know, uh, uh, very patronizing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and I'm trying to play with this and also with my identity and the expectations uh, uh, of the market where I am right now. How I should behave, uh, 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 what kind of language I should have in my <coughs> productions, etc, uh, etc. Et and uh, one thing that I wanted to mention even before, which I think it's very important for this whole uh, uh, discussion that we have right now is the question of the language. Language is the first instrument of oppression uh, exclusion. I'm not talking about spoken language. It can be uh, language in the broader uh, uh, sense. So uh, uh, 
as long as we are in those institutions that wants to open themselves, that wants to open themselves and uh, uh, include more people, we have to think what kind of language we produce, who is excluded through this language. Uh, and, and this is interesting uh, because I was in Oslo a few months ago and we were discussing about this because there at school, if I understood correctly, they have a lot of uh, 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 professors coming from non-European uh, country trying to uh, uh, speak about the other uh, 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 traditions, but basically uh, the form of the transfer of the knowledge and the production of the art stays the same. We don't question uh, the forms of representation which are dominant for I don't know how many centuries uh, here. We, we, I ask very often uh, my, when, when I teach workshops or when I speak with the actors, do you know any Vietnamese play writer? Tell me one name, like you know so many European play writers, but can you just, do you know just one name? And they, and of course, nobody knows anybody from this because we are so self-centered and, 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 the, and the language uh, uh, that we uh, uh, produce is most of the time unquestionable. But I think that language is actually first materialization of, dom of certain dominance and oppression. And then, of course, uh, Another thing which is related, uh, this is very interesting, like how to produce for everybody. Yes, of course, there are people with different uh, uh, cultural, cultural capital, uh, cultural competence, and uh, what is represented as uh, art for everybody is not art for everybody. Art is an ideological battlefield. I want to see something, I want to see it in this way, and not in the way that you uh, What's going on? Is everything okay? It's really, I'm sorry. No, 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 uh, that, that happens. Uh, so so that, that, that's very interesting for, for me, like uh, uh, how, how can we uh, put under the question mark uh, the language, artistic language, which is most of the time uh, unquestionable. And, and the last, uh, but not the least, uh, who is our audience? I, 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 I agree with uh, Matthias, I don't believe in art for everybody. Art has to have uh, 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 its uh, uh, target audience. Uh, uh, and, and of course, uh, the, 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 those institutions, however they represent themselves uh, as a universal, as for everybody, etc., are not this. They, they, we, this is obvious, it doesn't have to be, one doesn't have to be an expert to understand all those mechanisms of exclusion which are like uh, 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 inherent to uh, the institutions as national theaters are. Okay, and uh, Matthias, would you like to add something to this? Yeah, I mean, regarding the censorship question, of course, uh, we don't, uh, that, I mean, uh, I mean, the capitalists and, and the, the ticket sales, I mean, uh, the commercial, it's like the same. I mean, this happens so much in the art field. I mean, for the, I could see it for the last uh, 10 or 15 years, I would say, uh, regarding art house film and uh, independent music, et cetera, et cetera. It's changing so, so much. So it's, we, we don't, we, we share the same, uh, like, experience there, like every art form. But I know that my, that this is really what I need to remind myself. I used to work for two months that, not being a hostage because we are so much into judging the success of how many audience will come and the number of seats I will fill for the next four years. And of course, uh, uh, I mean, anyone could quite easily count out exactly what kind of titles, what kind of plays, what kind of concepts, but would reproduce the same people coming in a commercial sense, buying tickets. And this is like, of course, a great censorship that, 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 that there is like a consensus of this is how you judge the success. And this is really been, of course, for, for the film industry, it's the same thing. And uh, uh, so I really uh, like what Oliver said there <laughs> about uh, also the, in the broader context, speaking about who's not coming to the theater. Uh, maybe if you have three audience sitting in the room and who is not there is also part like of the performance not coming. So, so, so uh, to question these things in the Swedish context, I think uh, uh, there is the, the greatest censorship I, I have to, to work with is not to say that, okay, we make this performance, but the aim is just not to sell out every 
uh, chair in the room or for the box office there. So I would say. So, you, so if I understand you correctly, you are ready to take that risk. And to see what... so. uh, I, I, I encourage, how is the life infrastructure of the theater? Is it like a fixed ensemble you come to? Yeah, there is a house with the actors or is it like you come, you bring in your own actors? How is the system working? Uh, it's a, a fixed ensemble and uh, uh, as much as I appreciate this in terms of uh, uh, actors having uh, 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 social security, etc. Uh, this uh, uh, can be also very uh, contraproductive. People are not motivated to, to work because they have fixed contracts uh, uh, for life. I mean, you, uh, you really have to do something nasty to be fired. And uh, uh, of course, this uh, uh, affects the quality of their work. They are not motivated to uh, uh, take any workshops uh, or work on themselves uh, uh, in, in any way. So I had to struggle with, with this uh, uh, to, to motivate the ensemble to actually push them in, in, uh, in the new forms uh, uh, to, to challenge uh, like a certain kind of inertia of this institution. And of course, beside this, we have opera uh, with big orchestra. All of those people are having a fixed contract, ballet as well. Uh, uh, so th 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 it, th there is not so much space uh, to to operate now. Uh, uh, Anya said I'm working uh, uh, as a member of artistic board of uh, Maxim Gorky Theatre and also as a house director, and and this is interesting example of uh, uh, of this. I mean, it's a, a city. It's the theatre founded by city of Berlin, but uh, they managed to produce a new model. They are struggling of course with the bureaucracy and all those uh, existing hierarchies uh, but there, there are different things happening and uh, uh, of course a lot of other theaters in the Germany started to copy this model uh, most of the time they are not uh, genuinely genuinely interesting in 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 like giving the visibility to those people, but more like to, to have it as an addition to their main program. And, uh, uh, but, but I, I think that Gorky showed that thing could be different, that, that, that it's possible even in those uh, uh, cities theater to produce another uh, uh, paradigm. Uh, uh, and of course now it starts for me to be most interesting, like what could be done uh, further in this context? What uh, uh, could be the next step in the development of, of Max and Gorky? Yeah, because I was thinking when you said like you turned uh, this, uh, your Croatian theater into like a Roma national theater, were you like inviting a lot of Roma actors there or was it like all the... No, 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 we, we could not, uh, we, we, we just did those, uh, uh, those actions of renaming the theater, you yeah. know, like uh, uh, on the symbolic level and not just on the symbolic, we had then events also, we had the program uh, uh, graduated spectator where we uh, formed a group of uh, more than 100 people and they had a certain kind of education to like have a more, let's say, critical gaze and understanding understanding of what theater is, how it operates, what is hidden, uh, uh, also some uh, technical workshops, how, uh, bringing them for the last rehearsals to see how that we create the light and all this that, uh, and, and like what, what, what is not visible when you just come to see uh, the, the production. And we try to include also different minorities in all those programs. Uh, one of uh, the programs that I plan to do, and then it became a part of uh, European Capital of Culture was uh, 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 performative kitchen uh, cooking diversities mm -hmm. we wanted to have performative cooking on the stage so it is also uh, this uh, neo-baroque building with a lot of this fake gold etc etc and just to be like uh, 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 people from other parts of the world and having them cooking on the stage mm -hmm. uh, 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 would be interesting for me. But of course, this 
this could not happen because of different regulations which were part of the theater already in that time and uh, uh, but we we at the end uh, managed to uh, turn it into one uh, uh, program in uh, the European capital of culture yeah I was just curious so you were not actually like letting over the stage and uh, if you said for this minority would you say they were not taking over in an artistic sense, they didn't take over the No, they, this and, was uh, impossible due to, uh, how do you go, call this, uh, basic document of the theater and all these administrative things. Uh, so uh, we, we but, but we were trying to give them visibility through other additional programs uh, uh, in, in, in our theater. And the one thing which I have to say, uh, Croatian National Theater in Rijeka is only theater to have a, 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 like a department for one uh, for drama of one national minority so it, the, the, the part of this theater is Italian drama all the other theaters Croatian national theaters in Croatia they don't have uh, uh, anything even on the symbolic level as a representation for any other uh, minorities uh, uh, and uh, I, I was very proud uh, because of this uh, uh, fact. It, it is unique in Croatia. Mm, okay. Mm. Oh, I don't hear you. Thank you. Um, I had to mute myself to <laughs> to diminish the level of noise. Sorry. Um, uh, I just uh, wanted to ask Oliver, uh, this gave me an idea. Do you have a question for Matthias, perhaps? Yes, I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm interested in the, um, in the similar set of the questions. One is like, do you have a fixed ensemble uh, uh, right now? And the other thing is like, uh, do you have already strategies for opening the theater and making it accessible for those who don't go there, who are excluded on, on different levels. You, you were mentioning very much like uh, this economical exclusion. And I know what you are talking about, some people cannot afford uh, this type of culture. Uh, their incomes are not uh, <laughs> uh, sufficient. So uh, wh wh what, is the, what is the part of your uh, program in, in, in this respect? And, and what is your program in general, if you, can, if you could summarize it for me? Uh, I mean, for first, no, there is, a, there is a fixed ensemble with like 43 actors on like uh, lifetime contracts. And I would say like 80 actors overall with a longer contract. So it's like, uh, I, I come to an ensemble theater really. And this is also in the position of the Swedish institutions that we have great ensembles and they're working with this. So, so that's the first part of the question. But of course, there has been a big discussion. I know like uh, Maxim Gorky worked with us also about the representation thing and we were speaking about, uh, therefore I was also curious about when you said you work in Croatia there, like also who's actually standing on stage, where you're letting over the actual, uh, uh, the, the, the power of the stage and the power of the uh, infrastructure and the, the money actually for, for making the theater who's standing in the, at, on the actual stage and that's of course crucial in the end uh, to getting like uh, open up the theater but I guess it's a combination my strategy will be like a combination now I take over a repertoire for the next year it's been fixed for a long time so my repertoire will start like autumn 21 but it's a combination of uh, starting up uh, projects that really could in the, the way of making the projects also include other groups and other people from other areas and in the really in the way you're making the, the productions. I, I made a lot of documentary projects also including uh, the, the, that, like the audience work or the work with, with the people we research or uh, work together with sociologists where, where like the making of the performance also have been including uh, uh, maybe persons that are not going to the theater uh, so usually before. So, so, so um, again, it's long processes there in the way what kind of performances you make. And also the audience work, I think, is very crucial to really, uh, to, to really have a, uh, yeah, so start, start dialogues with um, areas and groups and people that uh, not at all think that uh, Dramaten is relevant for them today. So, uh, 
I mean, it's a combination of this, but in the end, it was about making relevant art also on the stage that could be relevant for, for just not fooling in persons that you want to have, as I said before, uh, that it looks good that we have these groups uh, sitting in the audience, but what we make on stage is totally pointless for them <laughs> and irrelevant for them in their life. So it's, uh, yeah, but I, for me, it's a long process. It will take time, but uh, is that the kind of answer of your question? Yes, yes. And, and just maybe I can add uh, uh, two sentences. This, uh, it's not that we did not have the idea uh, to uh, bring the other people on the stage, but this uh, structural discrimination, which is already inscribed in this type of institution, really does not allow the, uh, uh, does not open the space uh, uh, for 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 this. And I was constantly confronted with with those uh, uh, um, limits of of the institution. Like I, I was pushing the things as far as possible. You have to know that we worked under enormous pressure. So uh, uh, there was constant ongoing campaign against us in all medias, uh, more or less. Uh, uh, very few of those medias were supportive. So we had to struggle uh, with this and also lack of the money and uh, in, and and then we got the the new uh, minister of culture who uh, turned uh, 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 destruct to, to turn into a kind of uh, his mission to destroy this theater uh, and what we do there. So uh, we we had to cope with all those things simultaneously. But I I think and and the other thing is that uh, uh, like uh, unfortunately. Croatia is a, a very uh, nationally homogenic country. Uh, it's it's difficult, you know, uh, uh, to to break through through this. Uh, and uh, but but we managed to, I, I think, go as far as possible under all those circumstances, and, and also to show to prove that uh, it is possible to do something different. I think that our existing law about the national theater should be changed and this would be an, a possibility to really implement and change. But till now, I didn't see any political platform, uh, social democrats or whatever, uh, which is ready to uh, uh, really uh, uh, go into this direction. They don't want to lose uh, uh, support and this is a tricky because of uh, of the structure of their voters and uh, uh, like uh, uh, so we, we we really try to to push the things as far as possible and even a little bit over the edge uh, under those circumstances and uh, yeah uh, I, I don't know if uh, at the end i'm asking myself that's also very interesting like if it if it if we made something better or worse did we just give the arguments uh, uh, like in any other uh, in any other circumstances they would say like no we saw what happened and uh, we we know what national theaters are and we're not gonna allow anybody again to uh, uh, try out something like this but but i think it makes sense we we created a certain symbolic capital that stays this cannot be so easily erased if i may add uh, uh, there is uh, uh, there is uh, a certain so to say wave of uh, transforming public theaters uh, which milo rao should be mentioned uh, with what he's doing uh, uh, in Ghent. Ghent is also a national theater in Belgium. Also, then there, there was this reformation of Minfner, Kammerspiel and some other, some other public theaters in Germany. So I would say that uh, people are trying. <laughs> so if this is, uh, this is um, because obviously there's a need for that. But because we're running uh, a bit short with time, I'm just going to, before we make a little break, I would just like to uh, ask uh, one last question uh, if you wish to answer it uh, and uh, we've been um, listening a lot about the new normality or as if you would as or as if you prefer to say new abnormality <laughs> in a way you already answered to that question Oliver um, so what does the new normality have in store for us theater people 
you know, connected to Corona or what do you mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah, there has been a lot um, uh, about uh, the world after Corona, speaking about the new normality, social distancing. And so what do you think it uh, holds for us when it comes to theater? Is it, uh, is it all uh, gloomy and uh, depressing or it might be a beginning of something new? Oh, I, don't, I really don't have the answer yet. I'm struggling with these questions every day now, but uh, uh, maybe now hopefully, I mean, uh, I mean, what's looking good for theater or whatever theater we make, of course, is that people are really longing for me meeting again in, in groups and have social interaction and uh, the unique form of theater that people are like uh, in a special time, in a special room together uh experiencing something together this experience will be uh, uh, as much stronger longing for of course in that sense is for the theater whatever kind of theater we make but uh the questions all these other structures in uh, i don't know what to uh, i don't have a clear answer to that yet okay okay I'm, I'm afraid from what I see uh, here in Croatia, there are already those voices uh, saying like, but this is not necessary, you know, like uh, we, we, we now uh, see that actually we can live without theater. And uh, it's not just about the theater, it's uh, like uh, it affects different other forms of human interaction, not mediatized uh, human interaction. Like, uh, uh, yeah, we, we, we can go and buy everything on Amazon and uh, we can watch Netflix uh, 25 hours per day. And, uh, uh, why why should we meet actually it's more safe it's more sterile uh, 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 but i think that uh, the, the theater is related to to a dirt certain kind of dirt and when i say dirt uh, i don't i don't want to be misunderstood i i think it's more metaphorically we we come together in order to risk something you know uh, uh, something can be transmitted in this kind of interaction. I don't want to have this safe distance. That's what is the most interesting thing for me in the theater. I said we, we saw in the history of the theater uh, uh, so many uh, uh, attempts to uh, challenge the liveness as, as an essence, as in presumed essence of the theater. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, uh, now I, I think that the theater should struggle for, for the liveness, for for this uh, unmediated uh, uh, coexistence of performers and their audience. And uh, uh, it is also a political event, even if it's the most conservative uh, evening, uh, uh, we still, the fact that we come together, that we breathe the same air, that we sit next to unknown person and, and, uh, and, and share something and have different opinion, but this physical proximity, that, that, that's what makes the theater uh, uh, interesting, uh, interesting for me. And uh, I, I don't know, like uh, I, the, the whole crisis, what, what was really good in this crisis gave me a lot of time to think about the theater, what theater is and what theater should be and uh, uh, where, what, what I should go now after this uh, uh, crisis. One day when this crisis is over and we don't have new cases uh, or whatever, what what should I do? Like, uh, how how should I? It it changed essentially my perception of of reality. What I'm really afraid of in those times, it's like uh, uh, the, 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 I, I was mentioning at the very beginning this acceleration. How. Uh, everything was prepared for this crisis, how the, the, the world went further. We did not stop actually. Uh, we, we just started with online uh, uh, lectures with everything turned into online. And uh, uh, like uh, this question of body, which is very important in the theater uh, uh, is more relevant than, uh, than ever. Because uh, of course, theoretically, 
the theater can exist uh, with with the live co-presence of the audience and the performers. But uh, I, I I think that 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 this this um, erasing of the body is very uh, a dangerous process, and it's happening not not just now. It's it's it started a long time uh, ago. Those politics of distance are prevailing. Uh, uh, public life for a longer period of time but we can talk about this later if uh, uh, I would like to I would like to thank you for this uh, very interesting and uh, inspiring conversation we will continue after the break